Michelle, we have seen in this contest, there have been a lot of barbs exchanged and, and primarily strong the, and the strongest barbs have been from within the, basically between the Poilievre camp and the and the Patrick Brown camp. Obviously, Patrick Brown's now disqualified. With that kind of barb exchange now seemingly eliminated, do we think things will be smooth sailing for the next few weeks? Do we still expect things to ratchet up or are we in the final days now where things are going to wind down? Oh, I don't know, actually, um, because like, for instance, right now, we just uh, at the Calgary Stampede, we had the candidates go, um, all the candidates came, it seemed like a big cheer for Poliev, all of them dressed in uh, Western uh, gear, except for Charest, and as a result, he got booed, right? So, I mean, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I think that at the end of a long race, things might get heated and the fact that another major player is out of it and it could be neck and neck. Um, we could see a little bit of that barbing going on, but honestly, I think Sheree will hold himself uh, to above. And I think um, Poliev is doing a really good job on his uh, videos. If you've been watching them, um, I think those are resonating with people. So I don't think he needs to focus on anybody else. I think he needs to just keep doing what he's doing. Michael, what do you feel are the strengths and weaknesses of the Jean Charest campaign and the Pierre Poilievre campaign? Obviously, they are seen as sort of the two front runners. And if I'm, if you think I'm wrong, please call me out on it. But what do you think some of the strengths and weaknesses have been, and how have they resonated? These policies resonated with the with the grassroots of the of the party. Look, I, I think to Michelle's point, uh, Pierre's videos have really been a uh, home, home run for him. They're getting uh, views, even his launch video, which was very uh, done in a very uh, low tech manner uh, on a Saturday night, to receive many more views than an average CFL game would receive at, at that same time. So I think Pierre's social reach, his organic reach, and his uh, communication skills have really served him well. I think you know uh, Jean Charest has really been uh, riding out on his extensive experience. And I think that's uh, a, a smart play for him. He's a, a incredibly experienced, both at the federal and uh, provincial level in Quebec, and I think does uh, have a case to make that he might be well positioned to win a majority government. He's just not really in line with the current membership of the Conservative Party of Canada, and I do not believe his campaign was able to recruit enough members to change that in a substantial way to uh, make him a viable option to, to actually win. I think one thing both campaigns have also done is they've taken the bait from each other, be it Jean Charest saying that Pierre Polyev, who's likely to be the leader of this party, should be uh, disqualified because of his support for the uh, trucker uh, convoy, or the freedom convoy, depending what side of that, that you find uh, find yourself on, was really an unseemly attack. And I think, conversely, you know, Pierre Polyev attacking Jean Charest as a liberal, which, you know, of course he was leader of the Quebec Liberal Party, but you have to go back to the time when he took over the leadership of that party, and it was when there was really only a uh, federalist and a sovereigntist option in Quebec. Back. So I, I don't think it's fair to uh, call him a, a liberal in the uh, vein of Justin Trudeau. So I think both campaigns, you know, certainly have their strengths, and I think their their weaknesses have been focusing on the other, uh, and, and they're both guilty of that. Now, Michael, you brought up an excellent point because this is a general leadership contest. It's for the party members alone. It's, in my opinion, it's voting within a bubble. Like this is the conservative bubble, and they're going to select their leader, and, and that's that's appropriate for that process. But at the end of this con contest, someone's going to have to run against, uh, well, as it is right now, Justin Trudeau, whether he have theories, whether he'll resign before then, who knows, but it'll be the leader of a Liberal Party, who is the Prime Minister of Canada. Michelle, who do you think out of the contest, and again, there's Scott Aitchison, there's Lesson Lewis, we have to talk about Roman Babber, but who out of this field of five do you think is best equipped to take on uh, the mantle of the conservative leaders to uh, leadership to mm -hmm. to defeat because that's the objective of the conservatives right to take power so who do you think could defeat justin trudeau in the next election well i already think you know that answer but i'm going to answer for your viewers i think it's john Charest, and it's <laughs> no, tell us what you want tell us what you think a, we're happy to hear what you think <laughs> uh i'm a pragmatist and at the end of the day i look at what the general populace, like you said, the conservatives, uh, we're in a bubble and whatever we like and don't like, we've seen that with the last three leadership uh, elections, we might choose a leader, but doesn't mean the rest of the country will. And at the end of the day, do we want to keep hoping for a leader that maybe somebody will like, or do we want a leader that actually can get elected? And I think Jean Charest can get elected. And I actually think the liberals hope he doesn't become leader because with him, it would be a tough battle uh, to beat him. And, and going back to Michael's point about new, new memberships, I just want to make this point. Well, how many of these people got new memberships doesn't mean these people are actually going to vote. And second, for those existing members like me, 
well, you don't have to convince us. Many of us would choose uh, the person we wanted anyway. So that's a, that's a overriding huge majority of people that are going to vote. And if they're already members, they're likely going to vote as opposed to new members.